Is waxing your chain really worth all the effort? After a full year of testing chain wax on all my bikes in extreme conditions, I want to share my experience with you guys. So one year ago, I got approached by a German guy called Felix. He asked if I wanted to try his chain wax. I had only little experience with chain wax at that time. So I told him I wanted to try it out first. And if my first impression was good, I would do a thorough long-term review on the product. Felix agreed and he sent me a big box of optimized chain wax. So here we go. I've used this chain wax for the last year, literally riding it in the desert, in the snow, 300 kilometers on the road, 200 kilometers through sandy conditions on the mountain bike, on the gravel bike, through the mud, in races and all that stuff. I'm gonna pour a handful of sand straight over my chain to test the chain wax. Now this is gonna be the dumbest thing I've ever done or it's gonna show that this chain wax is the real deal. In this video, I'm gonna share all my findings, the upsides and the downsides and also the mistakes that I used while using this product so you don't have to. I just had this chain in the degreaser for maybe two days. It's completely rusted. It's getting a little bit messy. I'm pretty sure that's because I'm doing this for the first time. Next time I'm gonna reverse the order I put it in the pan. So is this a sponsored video? Well, sort of, because I'm getting all of this stuff for free and if you buy it, you know, you get a discount, I get a small kickback but it would be easy for me to just make a five minute promo video and sell a lot of this stuff, but I'm not doing that. After watching this video, you'll see that I don't hold back on any negatives about the chain racks and I'm not gonna make you buy it. You can decide on your own. And before I tell you why a wax chain actually works so well and stays clean, easy to maintain, silent, very fast and all that stuff, I wanna go over the least fun part. The process of degreasing. This is probably the most important, but the least popular step of all. If you don't do this correct, the product is just not gonna perform like it should. An already used chain is actually not as difficult to degrease as a new one. The stuff that they put on in the factory is the worst you can have on your chain. It will just attract dust and sand and you need to remove this independent on if you're planning to use chain wax or any kind of other lube or wax or oil or whatever. So now I've got the uh, brand new chain that's coming out of the acetone. So I can already feel that this doesn't work. You can just feel that the chain is still very greasy. I'm gonna use some uh, chain degreaser, which usually works pretty well. It's still greasy. After using acetone, then industry standard degreaser, and then an ultra bath, it still feels a bit sticky. It still doesn't feel like it's completely degreased. And that's how much I want to emphasize the degreasing process is so important when you have a brand new chain. The factory grease, especially on the Shimano chains, is so freaking hard to get rid of. This is the most important step. So I'm going to use the brake cleaner, which is also a very, very strong degreaser. I am gonna use the bag again. Put this in the bag. I'm gonna spray it with the brake cleaner, but I'm not gonna leave it in there for the whole day. I'm just gonna leave it in for a little bit. I'm gonna clean out the ultrasonic bath and then do the whole process again to make this super, super clean. A few minutes later. Rinse it in clean water. You can already hear the difference because it makes sort of a rattling sound. So now it finally feels dry. So a new chain is always a bit of extra work to get it degreased. Once you've done it, now we can get to the fun part. We're gonna hot wax this chain. I've used quite a bit of different products and ways to get a proper result, but it wasn't until recent that I found the best degreaser of them all after a tip of Felix. This is a Dura Ace chain and this has been in this jar with uh, water and a little bit of chain degreaser for like two months. Just forgot about it. Oh, okay. This is a brand new chain. Degreaser, I used acetone, I used all these different things. You know, it's still not 
completely free of all the grease. Now I have another product and it's called Nitro Verdunner. Nitro Universal Solvent. So now, finally, a product that seems to be a real proper degreaser. The big test I have now for this uh, Nitro Verdunner, a brand new Shimano chain. The worst thing you can do is ride it just like that. The test is, is Nitro Verdunner going to really degrease this stuff? And you can see how dirty the solvent is now after just one round. So one time is not enough. Nitro thinner. It's used to clean paintbrushes and stuff. And it's a lot cheaper actually than regular chain degreaser, but it's way more effective. One thing of working with these pretty aggressive solvents like brake cleaner and nitro thinner, all that stuff is to be mindful of ventilation. Best would be to do it outside or with an open window on, or door right next to you. So with a new Shimano chain, I found that two rounds of shaking it in a jar would get you a pretty good result. A third time would make it perfect. You can hear it rattle which is a good sign. So to do it 100%, I would say three times in a nitro solvent and you will have a perfectly degreased chain. Finally, a product that really, really works. One thing you shouldn't forget when you've already used a chain on your bike to also degrease your front chain ring, your cassette and your pulley wheels because otherwise this will contaminate your newly waxed chain. The great thing of wax is after you've degreased your chain just once, it will never get dirty again. I know it sounds too good to be true, but just keep watching and I'm gonna show you. After using a degreasing product or the ultrasonic cleaner, just rinse off the chain with water. Make sure you let it dry in a warm room or over the radiator or something so it doesn't attract any rust. Especially with lower graded chains like the Shimano 105, this can happen. Step two, the wax. This is the second and actually already the last step of the whole process. You can do it in two ways by hot waxing or by drip waxing. But first, let's talk about the wax in general. Optimized Wax is a water-based paraffin product. It's liquid when it's applied, but it has a high melting point. So once it's dry or cold, the wax becomes a solid. The wax penetrates the chain during the application. And once it's dry and cold, when you move it, a little bit of the wax is going to be pushed out and it creates a barrier around the link. This will prevent dust and sand coming into the chain between the links and the pins. So this will actually protect the inside of your chain and it keeps it lubricated. This way you can really see how the wax gets everywhere. I wax it with the quick link partly mounted. When I take off the quick link, you can see that there's wax on the link and it's completely surrounding the inside of the chain. And that's what the important thing is, because that's where the friction is. And that's also the big difference with an oil or uh, any other liquid lube, which is a very low melting point and therefore it's always liquid. And with an oil chain, sand particles that will land on the chain can actually stick to the rollers and the links and that will get in between and it will create a lot of friction. If sand or dust lands on a waxed chain, it will fall off with a little bit of wax and this will actually keep the chain clean. A few moments later. Optimize offers three types of wax that can all be mixed with each other. The standard wax, this is good for you know, a clean chain and low friction. Then there's the graphite wax. Some addition of graphite in this product makes it increase your longevity. And then there's the graphene wax. The graphene will provide the ultimate performance, the lowest friction and the longest lifetime of your wax and your chain. The graphite and the graphene also comes in a hot wax variant. You can mix all of these with each other. It doesn't matter. And I will show you how to apply this wax for the first time. The drip wax is probably the easiest of the two. It's water-based, so it's fluid when it's in the bottle. And once it's applied, it needs to dry out and then it turns into a solid. All the wax has dried in. I can see some particles falling off. That's just the excess wax. And now you can see it's still a bit stiff, but that's gonna change within a couple of kilometers. You just drip it onto the chain and it will penetrate the complete link. You can do it link by link if your hobby is waxing chains or you can just rotate the cranks and then drip it on the whole crank. 
I usually do another few rotations with my finger on the chain so it spreads out more evenly and really pushes it into the links. Don't apply it to the outer plates, only to the top of the rollers. Then let it sit. Don't rotate the cranks for a few hours until it's completely dry. The hot wax. If you have a little bit more time or you're looking for that few extra percent of performance and longer lifetime with a single application, you can use the hot wax. Optimize claims that the hot wax can last for 800 to 1000 kilometers in certain conditions. That's a lot. I'll come back to that statement later. First, let me show you how it works. The first time I was hot waxing my chain was actually because of this video. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a big mess. I went out to buy a new pan. This one is gonna be only for your hot wax. This hot wax stuff with graphene in it. Now, that's the, actually the, the secret to this wax. Because graphene is some kind of nano thin molecule or atom which sticks to your chain and then it makes the friction lower. Pretty cool. It's getting a little bit messy. I'm pretty sure that's because I'm doing this for the first time. Next time I'm gonna reverse the order. I put it in the pan. I had wax all over my hands, all over the kitchen. And it was on the walls, it was everywhere. But the result was a nice wax chain that I rode on my mountain bike this winter. The second time I hot waxed, it was a lot easier and I'm sure that you can do this. You put a wire through the chain to easily take it in and out. And then you leave the chain inside the pot for about 10 minutes. So the whole chain warms up. This will make sure that the wax will really penetrate the whole chain. Important is to use the lowest possible temperature on your stove. Just warm enough to liquefy the wax but not too hot so it will sort of flow out of the chain when you hang it up. The DIY hack that I made was a cardboard box to put over the pot. This made it possible to hang up the chain over the stove, which made everything a lot easier. And this way it will cool down slowly. Anything that drips off will drip back into the pot and then that's just gonna be going back into storage. The difference between the hot wax and the drip wax is that you will use heat with hot wax to make it liquid instead of the water emulsion in the bottle with the drip wax. For the rest, the product is the same and it can be used on top of each other. You can mix and match. Early the next morning. It's the next morning and uh, it's time to check out the chain. It's been drying up the whole night. So after the chain is all cooled down, you will need to break the chain by moving all the links around before you can actually mount it. You will notice that the chain is very stiff because all the wax is solid in between the links. But if you, when you start moving it, some particles will fall off and the chain will become more flexible. Do it above a bin or outside or you're gonna create a lot of mess. Once you've mounted the chain and you start rotating it or riding it, within a minute, you will feel that the chain just becomes super smooth. Step three. Rewaxing. You can do it with a drip wax or with the hot wax. Like I've mentioned, you don't need to clean your chain. So you're saving a lot of time. You could choose just to use a dry rag uh, before you apply or you rinse off the bike and the chain with just simply water or a little bit of soap. And your chain will be super clean. When you use the graphite or the graphene variation of the product, it might appear a bit dirty. It's gray, but that's because of the graphene and the gra graphite is gray and that's the additive into the product. After weeks of use and reapplying it over and over and over again, your chain can look like this. So I've been riding uh, the bike in kind of wet and dirty conditions for the last uh, few rides. Haven't really touched it. It's super dirty. At this stage, I really think it's time to maybe clean it up a little bit and then re-lube it. So I haven't cleaned it for like 2000 kilometers right now. I'm actually impressed. And the chain just becomes very clean with only using water and this very light washing foam. Normally after a couple of weeks of riding in this weather with normal chain lube, the chain would be like completely black, stuck with all this oily grease completely embedded into the chain. You'd have to just thoroughly degrease it. But 
with this chain wax you don't have to degrease it because there's no grease it's really cool the chain still looks a bit dirty because but that's still from that graphene that's still on the chain just like i showed in dubai so i'm gonna relube it now with the graphene grip wax and then tomorrow i'm actually doing a practice race and i feel confident that this chain is going to be super smooth you like her? Yeah. Who's out? Yeah. Another way to do it is simply take off the chain and cook it in a boiling water for 10 minutes. One important thing to notice is during the wax application is the temperature of the product. Right now it's obviously super cold, there's snow. And what I notice now while I'm lubing the chain, waxing the chain, is the, the wax doesn't flow very well in between the links. So leave your bottle inside the house in a warm place and also your bike is best to be at room temperature when you apply it onto your chain. Otherwise, the product is just gonna be too thick and it doesn't flow through the links of the chain. Just make sure you do it when your girlfriend is not home or she's totally okay and a cycling fanatic. So you don't get into an argument about having bikes inside the house while you also have a big garage. Another tip I have before you reapply your wax is when you ride in the wet, don't just get home and leave your bike in a cold, wet place because chain wax has a little bit less resistance against rust for example than an oil does but i've got a good solution the best thing is to make sure that your chain is dry when you leave your bike so either let it dry in a warm room or take a towel and just dry it up what works great if you just reapply very likely a sun wax on the chain just right after you did that wet ride the wet will flow through the wet links very well. And as it dries up, it will just prevent the rust from forming at all. What I actually do is I use the graphene wax for my proper applications. And then when I get back from a wet ride, I use the, the cheaper standard version wax just to apply a little bit so it doesn't rust and it works great. But I don't ride a lot in the rain anyway, so. Rewaxing with hot wax is very much the same. However, not to contaminate the hot wax in your pot, I would first clean the chain before putting it in that pot of wax. So you can do it in boiling water or like I have, I have an ultrasonic bath. No need for degreaser anymore because there is no grease or oil whatsoever on the chain to start with. Super duper clean. This is pretty good. I've also heard people that had two hot wax baths, so they have one dirty bath and a, and a clean bath. So you take the chain off the bike and you put it in the dirty bath first and then in a hot bath. I've not done that stuff. So that, for me, that's a little bit too much. The big question is, how long does it last? And when do you reapply? So it's snowing this morning. I'm on the bike, I'm riding for a while now. Curious how the chain is gonna be when I'm done. Been out for two and a half hours through the slush and the crap and uh, the chain is still not making the grinding noise. This would be oil, probably have all the sand and the stuff on the chain so you get the grinding noise from the from the sand that the chain picks up. Uh, it's super clean man, I just rinse it off with water and the chain is still really really clean. I've had different experiences with the hot wax and the drip wax but in general it lasts quite long. But that's relative. One of the big benefits of the wax, in my opinion, is that it just doesn't get dirty and you don't need to clean your bike in between applications. As an example, I took a bike to my Dubai trip where I was training almost every day. And just before our arrival, there was torrential rain, the complete desert flooded. And on my first ride, I was riding through thick layer of mud and puddles and my bike just looked like a turd. It was destroyed. And I could have washed it, but I didn't. I thought it would be a good test for the chain wax as I just started using the product. So I kept riding the bike for hundreds of kilometers in the first week without cleaning it once. The only thing I did after about 300 kilometers was just rub the chain with a dry rag and reapply the drip wax. The only thing that would come off the chain was a bit of wax particles, but hardly any mother sand would even stick to the chain. The chain was still silent. After about a week, I got help from a local and I washed off my bike only using water. And the chain just got super clean, super easy. And then I just reapplied the wax just like the first time. 
On my last day there, I did a six hour, 200 kilometer ride in dry, windy, sandy conditions in the desert and the wax kept up great. After the whole day, it was still silent and smooth. 200K after I threw a handful of sand over it a couple days ago and I only just put a little wax on it. So the answer is on when to re-wax your chain, it's quite easy. You just re-wax it when your chain starts to make a little bit of that metally sound, a bit of noise, and then you reapply. So when this starts to happen is very dependent on the conditions that you're riding in. I've done 300 kilometers on the road at the Le Tapte Tour in Denmark, and my chain was still silent. But I've also done maybe four hours, about 100 kilometer of uh, mountain biking in, in the wet, in the rain, and then I could hear the chain, you know, making that metally sound, so I had to reapply. So it really depends. I had this hot wax chain on my bike to Mallorca, the BH Ultralight, and I rode for the first, I think, six rides, at least 500 kilometers with the, the bike, and it was super smooth, super silent. And the only reason I reapplied was because we did a long ride on the last day, and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna make any noise. For example, this chain is the chain I used on Mallorca. But before I went to Denmark for like top the tour, I used the drip wax. So it was a hot wax chain that I reapplied some drip wax onto it. And yeah, it's super smooth still after 300k. It would be around the 500 kilometer mark that I usually reapply on my bikes. So 800 to 1000 kilometers on a hot wax chain, it's stretching it. It is possible, but usually I already reapply some drip lube before I reach that limit. And I think that the drip wax doesn't underperform compared to the hot wax. I noticed kind of similar uh, results. The last thing I wanted to mention is using the wax on the indoor trainer. This is probably the situation where it's not the best product. Uh, as the, the great benefits, like you know, not getting a dirty chain at all, or dust and sand landing on the chain, etc., they're just not really a thing when you ride indoors. So you will end up with the wax falling off the bike on the floor, and it just makes your floor dirty. I use a rag underneath the bike to, to solve that. However, if you have only one bike and you're putting it on the inner trainer and then outside, and you want to use the hot wax, you cannot use oil and you need to clean your indoor trainer as well before you use the wax chain on your indoor trainer or you're gonna contaminate it. So using two bikes on the same indoor trainer means both bikes need to be ha having a wax chain or you're just gonna mess up the product. To conclude, I'm sold. I'm sold on using chain wax. I've used it for a year and I'm going to keep on using it. I thought it would be a lot of work and a lot of hassle to wax a chain. It may be your thing, it may not be your thing, but I actually found out that it's less work than an oil chain because you save all so much time with not having to clean it every time you wash your bike. Besides that, the chain is smooth, its shifting performance is great, and it stays on for a very, very long time. If you want to see me in action using the chain wax, make sure you check out these videos. And if you want to get the optimized chain wax with a little discount, make sure you check out the top comment or the description for a discount code and a link. Have fun waxing! See ya!